What does it mean to make up people according to Ian Hacking? To understand this term, one must first understand social identity, which is both personal and social. Our identities are socially constructed because the categories we use to describe ourselves and others are produced when we interact with others. One must also understand the two views of classification that came before Ian Hacking, which are the nominalist view, which is the idea that new categorizations create new ways of being, and the realist view, which states that scientists put a label on things that already exist. People don't just categorize objects, but also people. This is where Hacking created the term making up people, which is neither nominalism or realism. Ian Hacking states that making up people is about how classifications of human affect our lives and how humans feed back into those classifications to change them. There is an interaction between our classifications and who we are. Additionally, new classifications create new descriptions and new possibility for action. This is where the term dynamic nominalism comes in, which is defined as describing the complex processes through which subjects are progressively, really, and materially constituted as certain types of people. In the model, a label shapes experiences, which shapes the context in which people make choices and how those choices affect the label. When people are given a label, they can either perpetuate the label or redefine or resist the label. It is clear that there is both positive and negative outcomes, but as humans, we have power to redefine our labels. Sometimes our actions can perpetuate the label, while other actions challenge other aspects of the label. For example, a girl diagnosed with ADHD will have different experiences in the classroom, as the teacher will be more accommodating to the student's needs. In the past, before there was a label for ADHD, students were labeled as disruptive because they were not able to stop fidgeting or pay attention for long periods of time. Teachers were not aware that the student had ADHD, and therefore made no accommodations, but saw the girl as a bad student. As ADHD became a more accepted diagnosis, the world around it became more adaptive, and certain accommodations for people with ADHD were created. Additionally, it is important to note how the label for ADHD became stronger after the cure was discovered. When people are diagnosed with ADHD, they might start acting more like someone with ADHD. Ian Hacking calls this the looping effect which is when people become aware of how they are classified and change their behavior according to their new label. In turn, society has to change its classification of them. When we label a person as having ADHD, we turn this phenomenon into being, which in turn brings back a self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, because you are labeled this, you are going to act like this. After writing and making up people, Ian Hacking wrote a book, Rewriting the Soul, and in chapter 12, he discusses the first person, named Felita, to be diagnosed with multiple personality, which is now known as dissociative identity disorder. Hacking wrote, Under a different type of treatment, all might have flourished. They might have been clues to Felita's underlying disease. But if we ask about what was, rather than what might have been, Felita had exactly two alternating personalities. That was how she was thought of, described, talked about, treated by her family, and regarded by na her neighbors. Felita helped to create the label of multiple personality when it was discovered on July 27, 1885. This put Felita at a disadvantage as she was mislabeled and misunderstood, which affects every aspect of someone's life. I hope you learned more about what it means to make up people. Thanks for watching.